Okay, so that I've talked about the essentially five problems of the traditional approach. Uh, let's move on. Now, Macrit has talked about, uh, spent some time talking about the problem of formalism in, in the traditional approach to comparative politics. Now, a way to understand what that means is to look at sort of, uh, you see this little graphic on the screen here. Um, what we have is, uh, this is a way of sort of conceptualizing society as a whole. Right? You have three sort of components of society. You have the state, which essentially is all the stuff that is pl formally political, like governments, bureaucracies, etc. A civil society, on the other hand, I is that area of, of society in which our relationships, or actually, well, another way of thinking about the state is that the relationships there are sort of hierarchical between uh, those who are governed and those who govern. Now, in civil society, the relationships are sort of horizontal. There's no hier hierarchy here. We meet each other as, as individuals, as, as citizens, uh, equally. So, you know, in important civil society um, institutions are, um, you know, uh, the, the churches, for instance, um, other I important um, organizations like NGOs, uh, you know, environmental groups, uh, um, other types of associations. And so these are where we sort of come together um, voluntarily uh, in the civil society. And the third is, is the market. And the market, of course, uh, we I is, is, is a peculiar relationship different from the state and civil society in that um, the relationship is between that of a buyer and a seller in, in, in some sort of exchange. Okay, and the exchange is made on the basis of uh, money, right? So we pay for a good or a service. That's not the case in civil society or the state, right? Um, fundamentally. Now, think about for a second, you can pause this and think about how big each of these um, sectors was, say, uh, 250 years ago, like, say, in America in 1750. How much did we get from the state? And you can sort of pause this right here for a second. How much did we get from civil society? How much did we get from the market? Or, or how much of our activity, rather, took place in each of these sectors? Now, you can pause this for a second. Just think about it. Write, write, write down how big you think, what, what uh, activities were Americans in 1750 taking, taking part in, in the state, uh, in the civil society, and, and in the market. So pause this for a second and think about it. Now, now that you've uh, press play again. The fact is that in 1750, the state was extremely small. I mean, it, it provided some uh, some legal uh, mechanisms like courts and the, and the police apparatus. There was a, uh, there was sort of militias, and there was a post office, but there wasn't, you know, there was nothing else really, uh, you know, that, that you that you received from the state. The state was very small. Think about all the things that you receive from the state today, right? Think about, um, uh, you know, think about what you did last night. Did you go to a movie? Well, the state was involved because one, think about it. Think about uh, how you got there. Generally, uh, if you got there, you drove. Um, you drove to see um, Samantha and Charlotte uh, uh, and and the others um, um, talk about their life in the movie theater. And driving there, uh, you could you can't just drive. You can't just get into a car. You have to go through uh, a licensing process, which is controlled by the state. You purchase uh, um, gasoline, which of course is also um, many taxes uh, in the price of gasoline go to the state as well. Um, your car has to be registered, also the state. There are, there are roads that that you dr that you drive along, also provided for you by the state. Okay, now um, so the state has has expanded tremendously over the last 250 years, where it 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 encompasses a lot of activities. And the market as well. The market back in the 1750s was extremely small, right? I mean, uh, um, a lot of households were sort of produced for their own um, self-sufficiency, okay? Um, and so most of the activity in, in 1750 were was taken up by the civil society. Uh, you know, if you wanted entertainment, right? Well, what did you do back then? Well, you provided for your own entertainment. Essentially, you you know, you told stories to each other. You sat around the hearth and or the campfire and played guitar and and whatever. Um, and so most of the you know a lot of the stuff that took place was in families, which is an important institution of civil society. Um, and very little in the market, so you didn't buy and sell very much. And certainly, the state was not very influential in your life. That's of course changed, whereas the state has grown to squeeze civil society <coughs> from from above, and the market has also grown to squeeze civil society. So what you have is uh, civil society shrinking at the expense of the state and the market. And in fact, one of the ways that you can conceptualize the difference between uh, Republicans and Democrats is that uh, the Democrats, for the most part, don't mind uh, the state advancing 
and uh, shrinking civil society from above. And the Republicans generally don't mind the market sh uh, advancing or, or growing to shrink civil society from below. So, but anyway, so now what does formalism mean? Well, what formalism means uh, was that, uh, and, and when Mercutio says that, that the uh, traditional approach to the study of comparative politics was formal, is that um, when they looked at formal, uh, comparative political scientists, generally were looking more at formal institutions, i.e. in the state here. Right? So if they wanted to understand you know, the, the link between, well, why are some countries more democratic or why are some countries more authoritarian or whatever, they, they looked only at the state level. Right? There has been a, a tremendous uh, a surge in looking at things like the civil society and the effect of civil society institutions, for instance, religiosity. How does religiosity affect um, democracy or authoritarianism? Right? Uh, th th formalism didn't look at these institutions in the, in the civil society or the market. Right? What about the market? You know, what about the, the size of an economy? How does that affect, for instance, democracy? Well, you know, the f a formal approach didn't look at that at all. It looked exclusively at the state here, at the expense of, or at the, to the neglect of, rather, civil society and the market. Okay, so there you go. So that's uh, sort of what you talk about formalism. Okay, so um, the next, uh, when I post the next uh, clip, it'll be, it'll have to do with the Laven March article, so please read that. Thank you.